It's the big break and we're getting to the business end of the big break. Quarter of a million dirhams of radio advertising to spend here at Arabian Radio Network and free company formation, free office at Dubai Airport Free Zone. Tonight we have three contestants, but we're getting brutal. Only one of them tonight is going through to the semi-finals. Two of them are going home. We will have a winner by the end of this week. Our judge this evening, indeed our judge for the past five nights, judging all of our sales and presentation tasks, is Mike Atak, founder and managing director of Atak International. And our third contestant this evening is Douglas Raymond of Phil Rays. He is, or it is, a specialty footwear and foot care company from medical to over-the-counter products. Douglas Raymond, you're going to have three minutes, first of all, to sell your own proposition, uh, your company's products and services. Your three minutes starts with Mike Atak's first question. Douglas, tell me, what is it about your product or service that differentiates you from others? Well, what we actually do is um, really simple to do with feet, but what we do is help people. So our genuine interest in their well-being and taking care of their foot health is, is our key focus. So what is it that your product does? Well, our products do everything from realignment of the feet to taking um, someone who's really athletic and sporty to protecting their feet when they work out or when they actually do exercise to all the way f- to someone who's actually suffering with a severe condition as diabetes to protecting their feet when they have diabetes. How does it do that? Well, different orthotics or insoles would help them with different ailments. And to to take someone who's suffering from a flat foot condition, who would actually help with realigning their feet back to their neutral position. Tell me about somebody that has bought your product. Um, They were in a situation which wasn't good. They bought it, and now they're in a situation that's good. Well, this, this is an interesting question because it happens to us every day. Uh, this is the great thing about what we do when, when we actually fit an orthotic device into someone's footwear. Tell me about somebody specifically. Right. Uh, I'll tell you about the first orthotic that I fitted. Good. Uh, this was a case where we actually went in. I personally went in to fit this orthotic to a woman. And when was this? This was about five years ago, really. Right. And um, uh, I was in a hospital where, we, where I was called in to actually fit the orthotic for this uh, girl. And uh, she was a runner. And she suffered from a lot of shin splints and a lot of pain just wearing her trainers. Um, I fit the orthotic into her trainer and she put them on and stood up and wow, that's all she said. So those are the kind of things that give us, you know, apart from the business angle, a great feeling when we help people. So if I was to buy your product, what would be the one takeaway factor that you'd want me to, to have? Satisfaction. Satisfaction in what way? Well, in, in the fact that what we've, 30 actually, seconds. what we've actually sold you is something that works for you. And in wh- terms of it being, a, whether it be a comfort-oriented product or something that helps you to your training or something that helps you stand a lot, whatever it might be, it actually gives you that satisfaction. Good work. Well done. Douglas Raymond of Phil Rays, that's the end of your first round. Your second round starts now. Giving one company the big break they need. With thanks to Dubai Airport Free Zone, only on Dubai Eye 103.8. Second task this evening, it's another sales presentation task. You've got up to three minutes to sell a random object that we found around the office today. We've just handed you that object, you haven't seen it before. And just to recap, uh, Douglas could not hear when the previous two contestants were on air. He was in a silent room and he was supervised at all times. So you have up to three minutes, starting from Mike's first question, to sell him the random object that we found lying around the office today. Tell me, Douglas, what is that object that you're holding? Well, what I'm holding over here is actually a multifunction ball. It's something that can be used to play around the house with the kids. Um, It's safe. It's not going to hurt them in any way. It's also something that can be used as a dog ball. Um, It's something that you can play around in the park with the kids and the dog. It's also a stress-relieving ball that can be used for people who actually feel stress. It can be used at any point during the day it could also be used 
on your feet, which comes back to what we do. You could actually roll your feet on this, which could actually relieve stress and tension for it. This is something which you would do at the end of a long day on your feet and would be a great exercise as well. Why, why would that be? That sounds really because, good, but why? Because when you've been in a pair of closed shoes or high heel shoes or any footwear or even just stood on your feet a lot, what happens is all, all the muscles and ligaments and tendons in your feet would actually contract, they'll be restricted. The first thing you do when you, when you get home normally is kick off your shoes. So putting this under your foot and actually rolling it back and forth is going to massage the undersides of your feet, which actually have the most number of nerve endings in the body. So... If I was to buy one of these stress balls from you, yes. what would be the big takeaway factor for me? Well, the big takeaway factor, like I said, is it's multifunctional. You could actually use it with the kids. You could use it as a stress ball under your feet or in your hand or, you know, whenever you're doing something at the office and you just want to relieve a little tension. Douglas Raymond of Phil Race, thank you very much indeed. That's the end of your sales and presentation tasks. Your third and final task this evening starts now. Whittling them down. Tonight, contestants go head-to-head in their quest for the big break. Only on Dubai Eye 103.8. And our third and final task this evening is our business general knowledge quiz. Five questions, Douglas, five points up for grabs. Your first question is this. Who or what was the world's highest earning celebrity or celebrity act in 2011? According to Forbes magazine's Celebrity Rich List. Five options, I'll give you them now. Lady Gaga, U2, Oprah Winfrey, Bon Jovi, Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm going to go with Lady Gaga. It wasn't Lady Gaga. She had a good year. She earned $90 million, some of it from me, because I went to watch her in New York. But the winner was uh, Oprah Winfrey, still $290 million. Okay, question two. Who am I? I began my career in the UAE back in 1981 as a computer programmer for a small company called Datamation, just after graduating from university in the United States. I then held senior positions at Dubai Ports Authority before launching as CEO, an online procurement procurement firm called Tajari. Following this success in 2004, I became the first woman in the UAE to hold a ministerial post in the government as Minister of Economy. I'm currently the UAE Minister for Foreign Trade. Who am I? Going to have to rush you. Sorry, boss. It's uh, Her Excellency Sheikha Lubna al Qasimi. Number three, Apple is one of the world's biggest companies. We know that. Indeed, its turnover is bigger than the economy of many countries. Apple's revenue in 2010 was $108 billion. So here's the question. If Apple were a country, where would it rank? out of 190 countries in the world. If you want to be geeky about this, I'll tell you the criteria. We're comparing Apple's 2010 total revenue with the 2010 GDP ranking by country from the World Bank. And there are 190 countries in that. So where would Apple rank as a country? And again, I'm going to give you three options. Would it be 55th, 105th or 155th? I'm going to say 55th. That is the correct answer. Apple will be 55th, just above Vietnam and just below Q8. But Apple still has a long way to go to eclipse the UAE, which ranked 33rd, the 33rd biggest economy in the world in 2010. Okay, question four. Who's the richest Indian businessman or woman in the Gulf? And this is according to the 2011 Arabian Business Indian Rich List. And here's the short list. Miki Jagtiani of Landmark Group, Yusuf Ali of the MK Group, best known for Lulu Supermarkets, or the Chabria family, Jumbo Electronics. Which one of those three is the richest Indian in the Gulf? Miki Jagtiani. Correct answer. Finally, a two-part question for question five. Which company operates the Burj Al Arab and Emirates Towers hotels in Dubai? The Jumeirah Group. Correct. And for the second half point, who's the chief executive of that company? No shortlist. Sorry, Professor. It is Gerald Lawless. (laughs) 
Okay, Douglas Raymond of Phil Rays International, thank you very much indeed. You can go and take a seat in the green room with our other contestants this evening. We're going to turn the speakers on now in the green room. They're going to hear the feedback they're going to get from Mike Atak and also, of course, from all our listeners who've SMSed in tonight. 